Hey, uh, this is Gautam Malhotra, uh, Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. Uh, this is um, a presentation that I, this is my first PowerPoint presentation that I ever did. So I was learning how to use PowerPoint. This must have been like 2002 or 2003. And I learned about animations. And I think I went a little animation crazy in here. Um, I haven't reviewed this since I gave it. Uh, so um, we're going to wing it. But this was, as a resident, uh, a presentation I put together to uh, try and help people understand and learn the sciatic nerve anatomy. So here we go. So yeah, this was our logo back then for the New Jersey Medical School. Dr. Delisa had created this. Uh, no longer relevant. So the sciatic nerve is, uh, uh, the, the word sciatic comes from ischiatic. Uh, which basically means hip. So the uh, anatomical uh, meaning is of or pertaining to the hip or in the region of the hip. So that's, I think, an important starting point because the sciatic nerve kind of comes out where the hip is. So in general, it is the largest nerve in the human body. Its branches supply all the muscles of the posterior thigh, uh, meaning the hamstrings, uh, below the knee and foot, as well as articular branches to all joints of the lower limb. Actually, it consists of two nerves containing, uh, contained within a common connective tissue sheath. They preserve their identity throughout. In some, uh, there's no true sciatic nerve and the two divisions remain separate throughout their entire course. Uh, in the lower third of the thigh, it divides into its uh, terminal branches, the tibial nerve and the common perineal nerve. So this is a cool uh, picture showing you um, all the muscles, but when you see this, maybe it makes you feel like this. <laughs> this is a picture I made of myself. It's obviously altered. I don't uh, have fetal alcohol syndrome. So I think um, uh, when first approaching it, uh, it's good to break it down into its anatomical sections, which include the pelvis, the gluteal region, the back of the thigh, the lower leg, and then the foot. Yeah animations <laughs> okay so this was taken from Snell um, and it's showing you uh, the sciatic nerve starting at the nerve roots uh, and then you see the common sheath that's in the gluteal region uh, that continues into the thigh and what you're seeing here is the tibial portion and then over here <laughs> the animations again we see the same thing, but now with the peroneal, com uh, common peroneal uh, nerve portion. So we're going to break both of these down and learn about them, okay? Let's start in the, um, uh, in the pelvis, uh, as we said. So it's uh, in the pelvis, the sciatic nerve is a branch of the sacral plexus with L4, 5, S1, S2, S3, and maybe some S4. Um, and as you can see here, it is the posterior divisions that make up the, let's see if I can, the posterior divisions here that make up the common perineal portion and uh, the anterior divisions which make up the tibial portion. Um, clinically, I haven't ever needed to know that. Uh, here we see the uh, greater sciatic foramen. This is important to see here, this greater sciatic foramen. And then you have these ligaments here, which together, well, this is the greater sciatic notch, I guess. And the foramen is created by the notch and these ligaments, the confluence of these, um, the sacrotuberous ligament and the sacrospinous ligaments. So this is where the sciatic is gonna, is gonna be uh, coming out of. So composed of bone and ligaments, formed by the conversion of the greater sciatic notch into a foramen by the presence of the sacrotuberous and sacrospinous ligaments, the sciatic nerve leaves the pelvis through this greater sciatic foramen. Here's another view of it from posterior. Uh, you can see here greater sciatic, oops, greater sciatic notch and the uh, ligaments and that creates the greater sciatic foramen. This is the gluteal region. So um, now we have the muscles um, also uh, in place, uh, but some of them have been cut. Whoops, where's my, yeah. So 
Uh, here we see the, uh, I believe this is the medius uh, that's been cut. And um, underneath you see all of these uh, uh, muscles, whoops, all these muscles, uh, which I used to call the butt sandwich because it was a bunch of jamelai as the bread. I don't know. That, I don't think that's very helpful. Um, but what you do have is the piriformis muscle here, which gets a lot of uh, attention. Uh, the piriformis muscle um, is right over the sciatic nerve here, and they've cut the sciatic nerve. Uh, but you can see that it's also uh, providing some um, hip uh, uh, innervations uh, as well. So the sciatic nerve can be affected in the gluteal region here. Uh, this is showing you that. Uh, it's covered by the gluteus maximus and uh, there's other structures that pass through the greater sciatic foramen. So if there's any issues with those, then you can also have problems with the sciatic nerve. This is just to remind you that there are articular branches that are coming from the sciatic nerve to innervate the hip joint and the capsule. This is a therapeutic eye rest slide, so just relax for a moment. And we're back to the uh, picture again. And here you can see uh, the gluteal region is next. Um, well, actually we just did gluteal region, so now we're gonna do the back of the thigh. You can see there's some innervations there. Let's go over those. So in the back of the thigh, it lies upon the adductor magnus, uh, and it is crossed obliquely by the long head of the biceps femoris. It gives off muscular branches and then articular branches to the knee. So the articular branches, L4 through S1, um, they arise with the nerve to the short head of the biceps femoris. So that's gonna be the common perineal component. There's three articular branches to the knee from the tibial nerve and three articular branches to the knee from the common perineal nerve. Um, the, combined, I think, these are uh, what we call the genicular nerves along with the femoral nerve, even though there is no genicular nerve. But this is uh, important because people will do genicular nerve blocks to help people with knee pain. So the muscular branches, um, there's one, uh, there's, most of them are coming from the tibial nerve. Um, and those go to all the hamstrings, uh, except the biceps femoris, uh, short head. So I had tried to make this mnemonic of base, if it helps you, biceps long head, adductor magnus, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus. The perineal component only gives you the biceps short head. So at the back of the thigh, there's also... Uh, uh, cutaneous in, uh, innervation that uh, you know you need to be able to uh, distinguish when someone has numbness and tingling. Now I think we are going to be in the uh, in the leg which means past the knee so here we are lots of muscles lots of muscles. Okay so the sciatic nerve divides into a large tibial nerve and the smaller common perineal nerve at the top of the popliteal fossa. Both of these nerves are external, posterior, and more superficial than the popliteal artery and vein. Um, so I've been kind of alluding to this, um, the sciatic nerve being a common uh, nerve sheath containing both the tibial and the perineal. So now we're going to get into that, where they break up. So here we're going to start to talk about the leg. Um, and as you can see here in the leg, there's a bunch of muscles that the tibial nerve innervates as, along with a sural component. And then the common perineal also gives off a sural component. Uh, and here are the muscles that it's going to get uh, innervate as the deep perineal and the superficial perineal. But at first, it's a common perineal. So here is sort of every everything uh, in one table for you, but uh, I'm going to try and uh, break it down for you. So uh, the tibial nerve, um, also named, uh, also called the uh, internal uh, or medial popliteal nerve, common peroneal would be called the external or lateral popliteal nerve. No one calls them these. The, the, this is 
before I realized also that everyone's calling it common fibular nerve. So if you've learned it as common fibular, that's actually correct. So the um, it crosses the popliteus, the tibial crosses the popliteus muscle, courses deep between the two heads of the gastrox, and emerges distal and medial to the Achilles tendon. These are all important points uh, when you're doing um, electrodiagnostic testing. These are landmarks. Uh, the common perineal runs medially and below the tendon of the biceps femoris muscle, and it descends, descends posterior to the fibular head, behind the fibular head, and that's both clinically and electrodiagnostically important. So the muscular anatomy of the lower leg, here we can see the gastroc, um, this would be the lateral head, this is the medial head, um, those combine to form uh, this uh, tendon along with the soleus eventually, with the soleus is here, they all combine to form the Achilles tendon which attach to the calcaneus back here, I think that's important to see. Uh, you also see here that the uh, sciatic has now uh, branched into uh, the common perineal and the tibial nerves over here. Notice that the tibial nerve really isn't right in the center, it's a little lateral. And when we're stimulating uh, nerves in the back of the knee, the tibial and the perineal are very close together over here. So it can be difficult to sometimes get just one of those nerves. Here you see though that the common perineal really does um, separate uh, and go laterally. Uh, you also see here that it gives off a branch. This is eventually going to be the sural nerve and the tibial also gives off a branch which is going to be the sural nerve and we'll, we'll get back to that. So here we've now cut away uh, the gastrox. Uh, now you can see the soleus muscle and uh, it's a little easier now to see the uh, sural nerve here. Uh, or a nerve to the sural nerve from the uh, tibial. You can see the blood vessels are over here along with the deep, parent, uh, deep tibial nerve. And let's keep going. This should be, yep, now we're taking away even more muscles. Uh, now we've removed the soleus. So you can really see um, the tibial nerve uh, coming down here posterior tibial nerve. I said deep tibial in the last slide, but you can see it going medially here and then it's right behind the medial malleolus. And um, um, let's see, this is the fibular head and you can see that the common, fem uh, common peroneal nerve is behind it here. We'll get back to that. So the tibial nerve muscular branches, um, really pretty much everything posteriorly is tibial nerve. So those are both gastrox, the soleus, the plantaris, uh, which was just adjacent um, to the soleus, the popliteus, the tib posterior. Now, tibialis posterior is a good tibial muscle to know. Uh, flexor digitorum longus and flexor ha hallucis longus. So everything that kind of plantar flexes is going to be uh, tibial branches. So now uh, we go lower on this table and I'm pointing out here that the next um, branches for the tibial are medial and lateral plantar nerves and there's also medial and inferior calcaneal nerves at the ankle. Whereas for the common perineal up at the fibular head you're going to get a superficial and deep perineal nerve. Here we are looking, um, I'm going to say anteriorly, and uh, you can see here that the uh, Oops, where's my, uh, yeah. You can see here that the uh, peroneus, longus, brevis, these guys have been cut away. And uh, you can see over here the common perineal nerve converting into superficial and uh, deep branches. Uh, and that's really important. So let's see, what have I said here? So there's a nerve to the biceps short head. Yep, that's the one perineal innervated muscle in the thigh. There's a, a branch to the sural nerve. Um, there's a, a cutaneous nerve to the calf. That's the superficial perineal uh, nerve. Uh, it courses around the fibular neck, passes through a fibroosseous opening in the peroneus longus. This is where people get a lot of compression. And after the fibular tunnel, behind the head of the fibula, at the inner side of the biceps tendon, it divides into the superficial and deep. So let's um, actually zoom in on that. And I think it's super cool here. You see the common uh, peroneal 
and then it divides into a superficial and deep branch over here. You can even see some branches going to innervate the knee. And then uh, over here, uh, this is just to show you with the snell, um, this is the branch that's going to go to the sural. It's going to join the tibial component and become the sural. Here it's showing you it's got some um, cutaneous innervation to the calf. You got the superficial perineal nerve, which only innervates uh, two muscles, um, and it's mostly uh, cutaneous, whereas the deep perineal nerve is mostly motor, and it only innervates uh, the skin of the uh, first web space. So they're kind of like opposites of each other. This is mostly motor and only a teeny bit of skin. This is mostly uh, cutaneous and just a tiny bit of muscular. So here it is, uh, the muscular branches, peroneus longus, peroneus brevis. Um, and in uh, some people, they have a peroneus quartius that's also innervated by the superficial perineal. The deep perineal does all the other sort of anterior leg stuff that the, um, that the uh, tibial doesn't. Um, so your tibialis anterior. Now, tibialis anterior has the word tibial in it. So it, uh, you know, residents usually initially confuse that and think it's a tibial innervated nerve uh, muscle, but it's actually uh, a very important deep perineal motor nerve. That's the one that'll give you a foot drop if you lose it. Extensor hallucis longus, pretty much doing the same thing, but for the toe. Extensor digitorum longus, pretty much doing the same thing, but for the, the rest of the toes. Um, a little bit of eversion and, uh, yeah, a little bit of uh, extension of the toes again. Uh, peroneus longus and brevis help with the eversion and a little bit of dorsiflexion. So let's go now a little further into the foot. Um, and you can see there's a bunch of uh, motor a little bit of skin, and uh, again, motor, lots of motor and, and some skin. So I'm going to try and uh, make this a little easier for you. I don't know if you understand the anatomy of the hand, then uh, this may look a little analogous to the ulnar nerve and the uh, median nerve in terms of how they look. And I think that's helpful as a starting point to, uh, to understand that. And what I guess I would say is that the medial um, does not uh, innervate nearly as many muscles as the lateral does. So um, I would probably learn the medial and as exceptions, and then the lateral are all the ones that are left. This is really kind of only important when you're dealing with um, uh, foot injuries, direct foot injuries, and when podiatrists are sending you uh, uh, electrodiagnostic testing for this. So the medial plantar nerve is larger, lateral plantar nerve um, has some more branches. Uh, it's got the superficial and the deep. Um, the medial plantar nerve um, courses deep to the abductor hallucis muscle and terminates into a proper plantar digital nerve. Um, and it has multiple plantar cutaneous branches to the medial sole of the foot. Um, that gets pretty detailed and it's not gonna be covered here. Here are all the muscles as I had shown you before. So here's all the muscles of the peroneal versus the tibial. And as you can see, I think it's uh, helpful to think of this is really all you need to know uh, for the tibial. Um, and, then every, and then if you know these, then everything that's left over is going to be plantar related. And they're all in the foot. They're all intrinsic foot muscles. Intrinsic means that they start and end in the foot. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, this uh, this uh, slide uh, is this is of course Dr. Kirschbloom um, when he had uh, darker hair. This is in the uh, Kessler uh, cafeteria, and I was the only one actually that carried around a camera. Uh, it was one of those uh, Canon power shots. We didn't have uh, cameras in our uh, phones at that time, and uh, Dr. Kirschbloom was never seen eating ever, except this one picture where I saw him eating some bread and drinking an Arizona iced tea. So uh, it was a big deal when I showed this picture. All right, moving on. So the cutaneous innervation, I think um, what's really important in this one, well, as you can see, um, the femoral nerve um, gives off the saphenous nerve branch and that goes all immediately. So everything else is gonna pretty much be tibial, right? 
So you've got this little area in the first web space is the deep perineal nerve. And the very, very lateral foot is sural nerve. Everything else um, superficially, sorry, dorsally is going to be the superficial perineal sensory. And uh, then over here, posteriorly, uh, you see the same thing. So now what I really want to show you is the sural nerve. So here you see the tibial um, in the um, posterior thigh giving off a branch that's going to eventually be the sural nerve. And then over here you can see the same thing from the common perineal. And this is joining that tibial component that I just showed you to form the sural nerve. So um, let's, uh, let's really look at this. So I found this... I found this really great uh, image from my uh, first year anatomy book uh, from Snell, where he talks about, he shows you this. Um, here's the fibular, sorry, peroneal nerve. This is the tibial nerve. And you see the branch to the sural, branch to the sural, and actually the tibial component is bigger, much bigger. So if you have a tibial injury, you may show that on the sural where you may not see it on the common perineal, if there's a common perineal issue. And then here's the sural nerve, and you see that it's in between the two heads of the gastroc. So when you're stimulating the uh, sural nerve, don't go so lateral. You have to start right in the midline between the two heads of the gastroc. Otherwise, you're going to be too lateral. Then work your way a little tiny bit lateral. Um, yeah, posterior lateral lower leg is uh, the sural nerve. Anterior lateral lower leg um, Again, sural and superficial perineal. Saphenous, I already told you. And then the foot, these are from Dimitru, and I think he got them from another book. Um, so uh, this, this is your superficial perineal sensory. And then there's a little space there. That's your lonely little deep perineal distribution. And the sural is all lateral here, uh, coming up here laterally and posteriorly um, and then the tibial is giving off the uh, medial and lateral plantars and you can see the medial um, is giving more um, innervation than the um, the lateral uh, for cutaneous um, again I just showed you this and here we can see again uh, this is from Netter now uh, let's see number one is medial uh, calcaneal branch, uh, number two is the medial plantar branch, and number three is the lateral plantar branch. So this again kind of like reminds me of the median and ulnar in the hand. So this is a, an inside joke. Uh, someone was uh, leaving our program after one year of PM&R. Okay, so now we can talk about uh, clinical syndromes. So sciatica, pain and paresthesias along the sensory distribution of the sciatic nerve may also have numbness and weakness. So what I usually tell my patients is sciatica is uh, not a diagnosis, it's a complaint. Just like coughing is not a diagnosis, it's a complaint, but pneumonia would be a diagnosis. So sciatica um, really should be looked at as something that has a differential diagnosis. And uh, this is Dr. Karen Kepler. She was my senior at the time, and then she went on to be a Kessler attending very, uh, uh, had many certifications and fellowships. Um, so she's showing you what someone looks like <laughs> when they have sciatica. Um, so some of the things to think about is um, intervertebral disc involvement, um, even though it doesn't directly involve the sciatic nerve. Um, and these are distributions that you can look at. So actual sciatic neuropathies, well, you can have a complete sciatic paralysis. And this means that all those muscles that we just talked about are going to be uh, weak. Um, this is usually due to a trauma or something went wrong during surgery. Um, and then this is just saying that if there's weakness of the gluteal muscles, then there's pelvic involvement. But um, lesions beyond the sciatic notch spare the gluteal muscles. But common causes of uh, sciatic uh, paralysis, as I said, are uh, surgeries that go wrong or uh, trauma. Now, uh, there's some cool uh, 
stuff you can impress your uh, attendings with, catamenial sciatica is endometriosis uh, that affects the sciatic nerve. Um, myositis ossificans is after you've had direct muscle injury to the glutes or something, then you get uh, the um, uh, formation of bone in the muscle, which is different from heterotopic ossification, which is bone formation in the planes between the muscle. So now we should talk about the piriformis syndrome. Just to remind you, uh, this big guy here is the piriformis muscle, and underneath it is the sciatic nerve. So I would say it's both under-recognized and over-diagnosed. Um, initially, when I was a resident, that was true. I think um, most of the academic community has become careful not to over-diagnose it at this point. Um, and it's proposed to occur when the sciatic nerve is compromised by the piriformis muscle or its fascial components. So you can see how if it gets a little too tight or fibrotic or any kind of problem there, it could actually cause problems with that um, uh, sciatic nerve. Um, this is Dr. Uh, Dan Kim. He was my senior showing you what it might, might, <laughs> might feel like. Uh, another point uh, to uh, consider is that there is a lot of anatomic variation of the sciatic nerve right there. Sometimes um, the common perineal component is uh, going through this, uh, the piriformis muscle, or sometimes the entire sciatic nerve is going through the piriformis muscle. But, um, you know, you got to wonder, is this actually a nerve problem or is this a myofascial problem? Uh, and I would say that majority of physiatrists will call it a myofascial problem and they will target uh, the piriformis muscle rather than targeting the nerve itself. So the piriformis syndrome uh, has a few exam maneuvers that you can do uh, and they're over here. So I like this slide. Um, I pulled all this information from Dimitru. So when you have a sciatic um, incomplete sciatic nerve injury, it's basically going to look like a common perineal nerve injury. Yes, so I said sciatic, which means something happened to the sciatic nerve, but the tibial was relatively spared, and the peroneal uh, has been affected. And this is because of a number of anatomical um, findings. One is that the common perineal funicular arrangement is such that there's fewer fascicles and and so therefore they're larger and so there's more likelihood that if a fascicle is affected there's more injury number two it's more superficial so if anything's going to happen to the outside of the thigh it's going to get the brunt of the uh, force it's got less protective connective tissue to dissipate the forces it's somewhat tethered at the sciatic notch, but more importantly, it's fixed at the fibular head. So it's almost like um, there's no uh, where for that kinetic energy to go because um, it, it can't flop around. It's going to be like a guitar string. And it's uh, the most common nerve uh, injured. Um, signs and symptoms will be uh, that uh, it looks, again, like a common perineal neuropathy. So when you're doing your electrodiagnostic testing, it's going to be really important not to uh, forget the incomplete sciatic neuropathy as a um, part of your differential. Specifically, what this means is that you're going to want to stick a needle in the short head of the biceps of the thigh. If that is involved, then you can't call it a common perineal neuropathy. You have to call it an incomplete sciatic neuropathy in the thigh predominantly affecting the common perineal component. If the short head of the biceps is normal and you don't have any other reason to suspect sciatic neuropathy, then you can call it a common perineal neuropathy. So the superficial perineal nerve can be affected um, and pretty much, fortunately, they'll uh, have less muscular and more sensory complaints. But if it's deep perineal, they'll have a lot of motor complaints and they'll um, have numbness and tingling just of that first web space. And uh, this picture kind of got lost here. But there's something called anterior tarsal tunnel syndrome. It's very, very rare. It's more rare than tarsal tunnel. Um, and basically at the ankle, at the front, it gets uh, uh, compressed and only the deep perineal 
um, uh, is affected. And in this slide, you see uh, Dr. Annan, my attending at that time, but now my friend, pointing to her first web space to show you how painful it must be at the to have a anterior tarsal tunnel syndrome. So tibial uh, peripheral neuropathies include tarsal tunnel syndrome, which we'll talk about in the next slide. Sural neuropathy, um, it's usually not something that you see. Um, you should look for something more proximal uh, involving the tibial nerve or even the sciatic nerve. Um, interdigital neuropathy uh, and Joplin's neuroma are things that are happening right there in the foot. Um, I haven't really seen these uh, in my practice in the last 20 years, but that could change. Tarsal tunnel syndrome is what you'll get the majority of your rule outs from podiatry. Um, it is very rare, uh, electrodiagnostically speaking. If uh, It's very rare to find abnormalities on electrodiagnostic testing, although maybe the syndrome itself is more common, but I just not have not been able to detect it except once. Um, so yeah, it's compression of neural structures traveling uh, behind the medial malleolus, uh, and deep to the flexor retinaculum. So you think of it as kind of like carpal tunnel syndrome, but it's not really. Uh, structures passing through are Tom, Dick, and very nervous Harry. Uh, that's uh, Dr. Ma's uh, uh, modification of Dr. Stidick's um, uh, mnemonic. So tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, tibialis, tibial artery and nerve, and flexor hallucis longus. So this is going to be mostly nocturnal um, pain and as well as pain with ambulation. And uh, you can sometimes get um, symptoms uh, tapping along it. So here you can see that medial malleolus um, over here. You see the calcaneus here and you can see the structures here. And here is the Tom, Dick and very is somewhere in there nervous Harry over here so you can see how inflammation of these tendons um, can well not the tendons but the tendon sheets can cause compression uh, of the nerve and the artery as it's going through here so in my opinion treating these the tendon tendinopathy tendon sheets is more important than um, uh, thinking about the nerve but yeah, if you inject it in here, uh, you would get the benefit of everything getting the steroids. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were going through a war at that time and uh, some of us didn't agree with it. And this is the explanation for the intro of Sciatic Nerve and its amazing friends. Found this uh, cute animation. So uh, that is the Sciatic Nerve. That is the first uh, lecture I ever gave. Uh, lots of animations in PowerPoint. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you uh, to think about how you're going to learn the sciatic nerve anatomy. Have fun.